of the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Don, let's stop. Okay, George. What's wrong, George? Running out of gas? You know it. Say, what's with all this health kick you're on? Well, it's nothing new. I believe all Christian fellows should be in top physical condition. Why? What's being a superman got to do with being a Christian? Here we have two Christian young men with conflicting ideas about what kind of physical condition young Christian fellows should be in. But you'll be able to draw your own conclusions after you hear this story. Oh, boy, give me horses any day. <laughs> What's the matter, pal? You don't like these uh, modern contraptions, as Stumpy would say? <laughs> right. Well, it is a little boring just riding around in our patrol car. Well, maybe you'd like to ride trail, like that young fellow ahead is doing, huh? Oh, looks like Don. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not that energetic. Don? Don who? Oh, Don Ferguson. He's in high school. He'll be a fine athlete someday. You know him, Bill. He goes to our church. Oh, yes, yes. Now I please him. Let's have a little fun. You going to pinch him for speeding? <laughs> Something like that. Hiya, Mr. Jefferson. Henry? Hi, Don. I say there, young fellow, where's the fire? Huh? What fire? <laughs> sure now, don't play innocent with me, lad. You know you're exceeding the running speed limit of two miles an hour. Hey, since when is there a speed limit on running? Oh, come on, Mr. Jefferson. You're kidding me. <laughs> okay, Don. You catch on quickly. Uh, Henry's a little bored of riding miles and miles in this mechanical horse, so I thought we'd stop and tease you a little bit to break the monotony. Glad I am that you'd be doing it, Mr. Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> He's got your number, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he sure has. Uh, by the way, Don, uh, just call me Bill. Okay, Bill. Well, I'd better get back to running before rigor mortis sets in. Right. Now, don't let your muscles get cold. We'll see you later. So long, Don. Keep up the good work. Hey, there's a dog in the road, and he's been hit. That's not a dog. It's a wolf. Yeah, it sure is a wolf, all right. He's still alive. I wonder what ails him, or did a car hit him? Get back in the car, Henry, and close your door. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, uh, are you going to shoot him? Yep. But uh, how, how come you're, you're going to kill him? That wolf is hurt. Not hurt, pal. He's sick. Sick? Yep. It's rabid. Rabid? Can you tell it's got rabies from here? I've seen many rabid animals before. Let's get out, take a closer look. Wow. I'll say it's rabid. Look at those dripping teeth. 
Grab a hold of the back seat. We'll throw him in the trunk. All right. I'm glad you said back seat. <laughs> He's dead, pal. He won't bite you. I know. You'd rather have me handle the head end anyway, huh? Yeah. Here we go. All right. Let's get going. Okay. Hey, how come we're turning around? We've got to find Don. There may be more rabbit animals around. Don? Wow, I forgot about him. Let's get going. Get both of those sawed-off shotguns out of the rack and load them, will you, Henry? Okay. You figure they're better than the rifles? You might not have time to aim with a rifle. Rabbit animals attack on sight. Yeah, if they do, we can't miss with these scatter guns. That's right. What's the matter? You see something? No, but uh, Don should be somewhere along here. Yeah. You see him? No. That's why I slowed down, pal. Uh-oh. You don't think that he's... I have only one thought. And that is to find him. I'll keep a sharp eye. Here, take this gun. And be extra cautious. Okay, Bill. I'll be careful. Bill! Henry! I'm up here! Hey, it's Don. Sounds like he's up in a tree. Where are you? Down the road a little more. Up here. Come on, Henry. Right here, fellas. Don, what are you doing up there? Yeah, what'd you do? Get off the path and and run up a tree? No, I, I was chased. Chased by what? I guess it was a fox. Well, come on down. We'll take you back to town in the car. Great. What happened, Don? Well, I was running along, and all of a sudden this fox came roaring across the road at me like he was mad at the world and everybody else, too. Yeah? Boy, I just turned and headed for the tree. I grabbed the lower branch and swung myself up. Oh, I guess you didn't have much time, huh? You know it. Boy, that guy was really moving. Did he hang around under the tree? For a while. And then he took off. Kept running around in circles. I just stayed in a tree in case he came back. Well, you had quite an experience, huh? I'll say. Yeah. Bill, what's wrong with that fox? And how come you guys have those sawed-off shotguns? Man, you're full of questions. You know it. And how come you guys keep walking so funny? Funny? I'm walking on my feet. Is that funny? Oh, come on. There's something wrong, and you know that I know it. You two walking forward and sideways at the same time, and... Those shotguns being ready, and you keep looking all around. Will you two guys answer me? He over there, along the edge of the trees. I see it. Uh, Don, stand in back of me. But I... That's an order. We haven't time to talk if it charges. Here it comes. It's a fox. Let him have it, pal. Let him have it. I'll back you up. <clears throat> you got him. I don't know if it's the same one, but it sure looks like it. What made him charge like that? He's got rabies. Rabies? Boy, I thought he was sick or something. Man, look at the froth around his mouth. Ranger One to all units. Ranger One to all units. We've killed a rabid wolf and a fox in the Beaver Creek area. All units, discontinue your present work. Inform all ranchers and farmers in the Shady River Valley and near areas that there is a rabies quarantine as of this minute. I'll check on your progress and map your coverage within two hours. And is all over and out. How come you're shaking now, Don? I just stopped to think. Did I ever come close to getting a good dose of rabies? You're right. Being the fine athlete you are saved your hide. That's what I was telling George just yesterday. We did some road work out here after school. School? 
Hey, what's up? What's the matter, Bill? Yeah, where are we going in such a hurry? To the Beaver Creek School. I hope we make it before Miss Jenny lets the children out for recess. Henry, stand guard out here. Okay. Children, please be quiet. Children, this is Mr. Bill Jefferson, our chief ranger, and I'm sure many of you know him. Welcome to our school, Mr. Jefferson. Thank you, Miss Sims. Uh, may I speak to you privately for a minute? Yes, of course, Mr. Jefferson. There will be no talking while I'm outside. Bill, what's Henry doing over there with that shotgun? I don't get frightened, Miss Sims, but we have a problem in the immediate area. What is it? Henry and I shot a rabid wolf and a fox. You didn't. Now, take it easy. Remember, you've got to keep calm in front of your pupils. Oh, I'll be all right. What do you want me to do? Just keep the children inside the rest of the day. I will. You can be sure of that. Are you going to leave me here alone? No. Don Ferguson will stay with you until school is over and the bus arrives to pick up the children. Now, there'll be an armed guard with the bus. But there shouldn't be any problem as long as everyone stays inside. You understand? Oh, yes. And don't worry. I'll be all right now that I've gotten over the first shot. Good girl. Uh, Don? Yes, sir? Uh, Miss Sims, this is Don Ferguson. Uh, Don, uh, meet Miss Sims. How do you do, ma'am? Hello, Don. Uh, Don, I'd like you to stay here with Miss Sims until the school bus arrives. I'll make sure your folks are notified promptly of your whereabouts. I'll be glad to stay here, Bill. Thank you, Don. And, uh, Miss Sims... Keep the doors and windows closed and locked. Well, it's about time you gallivant characters got back here. Hi, old timer. Hi, yourself. What have you two been up to? You got the whole county in an uproar. Likes of which I ain't seen since the last Indian attack. Come here. I've got something to show you. <laughs> yeah, you'd better. This rabies scare has got folks so excited they're ready to bite each other. There. <laughs> is them two the evidence? Take a close look, old timer. Yeah. Right from here is close enough. I can see them gripping teeth just fine. Children, I want you to pay close attention to what I have to say. This is very important. That's fine. When the school bus comes this afternoon to take you home, there's going to be a man inside with the driver. And this man is going to have a big gun. Like Davy Crockett? <laughs> <laughs> yes, like Davy Crockett. Now, I don't want you to be frightened, and you must do what you're told and be very obedient. This man with the big gun will walk most of you from the bus to the door of your home. But it's all right, so don't get alarmed. Now, we still have half an hour until the bus arrives, and I want you to do tomorrow's reading assignment. And there must not be any talking. Miss Sam? Yes, Tommy? Why was that ranger standing outside with a big gun like he was going to shoot? I thought I told you to stay in your seat when I left the room. Why did you look out the window, Tommy? To find out what was going on. 
Ain't that what windows are for? Have you got it straight now, Herman? Yep. How about you, Luther? Well, I got it straight all right, but I can't see as I like it much. No, sir. What you yelping about, Luther? I'm the one that's got to do the shooting. Say shooting to do. Uh, Herman, next to Stumpy, you're the best shot in the state. I'm counting on you not to miss. Well, the old timer's only a hair better shot than me, and he don't miss ever, does he? Not as far as I know. Don't worry none, Bill. I'll take real good care of them youngsters, and you can worry about hunting them rabid varmints down. Yeah, you got enough to think about. You just leave this up to us. Well, we better get this bus rolling, because it's, it's getting close to pickup time. Okay, fellas. Take off. I'll see you later. The whistle? Yep. Keeps my mouth shut while I'm a-thinking with my head. Well, can't you think without making so much racket? Nope. Gets too quiet, and then I get scared from the silence. Herman, you, you're the most impossible man I've ever known. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got a flat tire. <sighs> oh, if that ain't a fine kettle of fish. Yeah, you said it. I'll tell you something else, too. Yep. I reckon you ain't going to change that flat tire either. <laughs> How'd you know? That's easy. You're so scared your eyeballs are hanging two inches out of their sockets. Well, I don't care. I don't care. I'm not getting out of there to change this tire. No, sir. Well, you hold my rifle and cover them in. I'll change the tire. Well, I can't shoot that thing. Well, we can't leave them kids a sitting in school all night. Oh, yes, we can. Yes, we can. They're safe enough inside the schoolhouse. And we're safe inside this bus. Now, sooner or later, somebody's going to miss their little darlings. And then the rangers, they're going to come looking for us. Meantime, I wouldn't stick my little toe outside that door. I don't want no dripping tea sunk into me. Children. I want it quiet in this room and not another sound. Is that understood? That's much better. Don, look out the window. Wow, that's just like the one that chased me up a tree. Where is that bus? Everything's going wrong today. Yes, ma'am. This is one of those days, all right. All we can do is wait until they miss us enough to come looking to see what happens. Miss Sims, I'm hungry. I know you are, but you'll just have to wait. Do we have to stay here all night? Of course not, dear. Help will come soon. The fox is still running in circles around the building. Children, please try to do your homework to pass the time. I can't, Miss Sims. I'm scared. So am I. And I'm going to be punished for getting home late, too. Oh, I wish the bus would show up. That fox is still out there, Miss Sims. I was afraid of that. My daddy won't like it if I miss supper. He'll be mad. 
Don, why do you keep watching the clock so intently? I'm clocking the fox every time he makes a circle. Miss Sims, I'm going to make a run for it and get help. Hello. Yep, this is the ranger station. You say your child is missing? Yes, ma'am, we'll find her. Yep. Yeah, this is the ranger headquarters. Lady, we know the bus is late, but we got to find it first. Hmm? <laughs> well, that's too bad, mister. I'm going to miss my supper, too. Henry to Stumpy. Henry to Stumpy. Ranger 1 to headquarters. Over. Now, where in the world have you been, Henry? I've been trying to get you for two hours. We've been beating the brush for rabbit animals. All of you? I tried to get just any ranger for two hours, not a peep. Yeah, we were all doing it. Hey, what's that noise in the background? It sounds like your phone's ringing. You said it. Uh, tell Bill the school bus is missing. The school bus is missing? You ain't gone deep, have you? You heard me the first time. Okay, so I'll tell Bill right away. On the double. We'll move right out of here now and find it. Phew. I can be thankful for that. I'm about ready to lose my bell ring in mine. Don, I can't let you risk being bitten by that rabid fox. Miss Sims, I can make it when the fox is on the other side of the schoolhouse. He's running in a wide circle. Takes about half a minute to get from the back of the building to the front. By that time, I can be long gone. If he chases me, I'll be up the first tree I come to. Oh, Don, I don't know. If you are bitten, well, the Pasteur treatment isn't pleasant, even though it will save your life. Miss Sims, I'm a fast runner. I work out on long distance running every day. I know I can make it. When it gets dark, it's going to be really dangerous for everybody. All right, Don. You're a very brave boy to do this. Oh, any guy would do it. Now, now we'll make sure the fox is running time. Then when I give you the word, open the door and I'll be off like a shot. Be sure and close the door right behind me. What if you trip and fall? Don't worry, Miss Sims. I'll be all right. I have to be. <laughs> What do you suppose happened? I don't know, Henry. We don't start imagining a lot of horrible things until we know the facts. I'll try, but... Hey, there's the bus. Right. What in the name of common sense are you two fellas doing here? Fox is heading round to the back. Open the door. Please, dear Lord, help Don run fast and safely. Come on, Luther. Ooh. Now roll the flat tire to the side of the road. There isn't time to bother with it. Ooh. Here's a good tire. All right. There. Lift it up. There. there we are. It's on. All right. Let's get those nuts on and tighten them up. That's it. There we go. All right. One more. All right. There. Uh, Luther, get in the driver's seat and wait for our signal. Yes, sir. I hear someone running hard down the road. Hey, it looks like Don. You're right. It is Don. Don, what's the matter? School. 
Fox. The poor kid is exhausted. Henry, you stay here with him. Okay, Bill. Herman, Luther, let's get after the school. There must be a rabid fox up there. Watch it, Herman. Don't take any chances. Yep. Bill, Herman, look out for the fox. I see the varmint. Huh. I guess I shot that varmint pretty dead, huh, Bill? Very dead, Herman. Let's get the children home. George, how's come you aren't complaining about working out? Don, you taught me something. I did? What? Well, as a Christian, I should keep my body in the best physical condition I can for two reasons. Tell me. Well, the reason one, my body is the Lord's temple and you know, I'm to take the best care of it I possibly can. And, and reason two, in case of an emergency, I'll be able to help out just like you did. Hi, boys and girls. This is Ranger Bill. I hope you liked our story today. That you'll keep your body strong for any emergency, just like Don did. In the Bible, we read, bodily exercise profits a little. So we see, therefore, that God expects us to take good care of our bodies. But there is something even more important for us to think about. Let's take a closer look at that verse I just quoted. It's in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and the eighth verse. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. The Bible tells us that a healthy body is important but that a healthy soul is even more important. And I think we can see why. Our bodies will die someday, just like a leaf on a tree turns brown and falls to the ground. But our souls were made to last forever, and they'll never die. So first of all, we need to make sure our souls are right with God. Since all of us do wrong, many years ago, Jesus Christ came from heaven to this world and died for these wrongs. He actually took our place to make everything right between us and God. But we have to believe this and trust God that this is true. If you've never done this, do it right now. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and to forgive you for your wrongs. Well, I'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Thank you.